This is how batteries are engineered. This is, this is why we have a revolution in batteries. Right? So this is a, a, a couple years old. There's so many great review articles on, on battery technologies. Right? But you, know, there are th you, know, you can view batteries. This is the cathode. By the way, what is a battery? Well, you know, a lithium battery is basically two sponges. Right? And, and, and one of them is, is, is usually carbon. Yeah, OK. And, and when you're running your battery, lithium ions are going in, right? And, and the carbon is so strong and kind of able to hold, you know, hold those lithium atoms in and not break down. So we often use carbon um, uh, on the anode side. And, and then when, when, we, when we charge it up, we, we push them back over to where? Where they came from. That's the cathode, which is a lithium compound. But you know, it, has to be a it has to be a material that can hold lithium in it, hopefully at very high concentration, but also be OK to lose it and not completely collapse. OK, so but now, and so you got lithium iron phosphate, right? Those are the, you know, these ones. You've got uh, manganates. You've got uh, cobalts, uh, cobalt oxide materials. There are so many battery materials. They all work the same way. The lithium, if it's a lithium battery, it's the lithium okay, is going to leave some crystal that has lithium in it. But it's, the crystal has to stay. So it's like a sponge that loses something from it but stays intact. And that something goes over to the, the anode. It gets soaked up there. And then you, you, know, you, and you can recharge, discharge, recharge. You're just pushing these lithiums back and forth. Right? Oh, but you're pushing them back and forth. You are diffusing them. That's what you're doing. You are diffusing them through whatever structure you're putting them into. Right? So if it's the cathode, and, and you're trying to get the lithium to come back in or to go back out, then you can imagine that the barriers and the dimensionality itself are crucial. What is an activation energy for a lithium atom in a given material? And does it take a 1D path? It turns out these can be extremely efficient. Look at those. They're practically holes. They're lines in the lithium iron phosphate. That's a really nice cathode material because you got these channels, these high conduction channels, these highways. Right? But then you say, well, but maybe I need 3D voids. Maybe it shouldn't have channels. It should have voids so it can choose more paths. Okay? Or maybe we have planes. Maybe it's a layered structure where they have these 2D planes they can travel through. What's the best? Well, it's, it's, it's not trivial, because it's, it's one of these, as usual, constrained optimization problems, where when you make the pathway faster, you might need to have more voids where you'll lose material. Or maybe you make the material unstable. Right? So you're kind of fighting. You want it to have a really high density, but you also want it to But the, the, the lithium diffusion in a battery material is related to the charge time. Right? That, that, so, so if you plot, like here's another uh, paper from a few years ago. Right? If you plot materials, now here's the specific power. And, and so that's the, how much power watts per weight. Here's the watt hours. So that's the energy right, per weight. And, and this is the charge rate. Right? This, is, this is the charge rate. And notice, so you want it to be very, very fast charging. And these are, these are different materials. There's the lead acid battery. It's still in your car. right? Um, these are nickel metal hydrides and, and so forth, other technologies. Here are the lithium, uh, uh, here are the lithium ion batteries. This is what's in your cell phone. Notice something. As I get up to higher, to faster charge rates, more open voids, right, in the material, um, I lose. I lose energy density. I go this way. Right? I don't want to go that way. I want to go this way. Constrained optimization. These are the things. What goes into solving these problems is calculating diffusion barriers, right? And energy densities and all the other things that matter. But if you want to target fast charging, you got to know the diffusion barriers, right? One of the number one uh, challenges in battery design is to keep that high while keep continuing to push up that way, right? See, polymers, you could imagine that a polymer is slower. It makes sense, right? Because it's, it's harder, as we talk about when we talk about polymers, it's harder to make crystalline polymers, to keep a polymer from having some amorphous region. I mean, after all, you've got these, 
you know, 100,000 unit long strands of spaghetti. So it kind of makes sense that the diffusion is going to be lower in a polymer than in one of these crystals, right? Like an olivine, lithium iron phosphate, right? So that makes sense. But polymers would be great because they're lighter, right? And, and they're, they can be flexible, right? And so, so we like polymer batteries a lot. We want them for many applications, right? So these are the kinds of trade-offs that you think about. And D is right there in the center because none of us want a battery that takes, you know, two days to charge. 